three, I'm pretty sure. Between two tablets. Hmm. Okay. So Mark's talking to Susan. He has talked to her about Gunny <coughs> and politics. <laughs> Being a politician. And now he's taking a deep breath. All right. It can't be that bad. Just tell me, she said. It is that bad, he thought. And he was embarrassed to tell her, but he had to. There are rumors going around that Craig is sleeping with somebody. Her eyes got big and then her face got red. That son of a bitch. Did he tell you that? No, Mark was a little confused. Someone else told me. Well, I'll bet the bastard is bragging it up all over the place. Listen, Mark, it was just one time. I was feeling real lonely and depressed. I knew it was a mistake, but he was there and said some nice things, and I guess I needed to believe him. I was weak for a minute, and he took advantage of it. He would do or say anything to get laid. I told you he was no good. I just wish I'd listened to my own advice. God, I hate him. Now Mark was really embarrassed. Susan, you're not the one I'm talking about. He's having an affair with Connie Bagwell. Several people have seen him coming out of her house at all hours when Joe was on guard duty or on one of his trips. Susan just stared at Mark for a long time. The muscles in her jaw clenched tighter and her eyes got narrower. When she finally spoke, her lips only moved slightly as her teeth never parted. He's out of here. I thought you'd feel that way. I'm going to suggest, since you will no longer house him, that he be kicked out of the neighborhood. I think he, we should give him some food and take him wherever he wants to go within reason. Obviously, Joe doesn't know about this, and if we can keep it that way, I'd like to. We'll just say that you and he have some differences about things, okay? Joe has a right to know. Maybe he does. Do you want to tell him? She shook her head. And the other thing, can that stay between us? What other thing? He winked at her. <laughs> she shook her head. And the other thing, can that stay between us? What other thing? He winked at her. Thanks, Mark. She gave him a quick hug and left in a hurry. Mark walked back to his house, thinking about exactly how he'd present his motion at the meeting tonight. When he was almost home, Jim met him. <coughs> what did she say? She wants him out. Good. Yeah, I was thinking we should give him a week's worth of food, something to cook in, a small tent and bedroll and a weapon. What do you think? The food and other stuff sounds right, but I don't know about a weapon. What did you have in mind? Maybe one of the cheapo pistols we brought back from Waco. I just think it's wrong to send him out without some way to protect himself, Mark said. You have a point. Let's go see what we have. The two men walked into the shed where Jim had unloaded all of the items that had been on the trucks Sunday night. The rifles and shotguns were leaning against the workbench and the pistols were sitting on top of it. They looked at several weapons trying to decide what would be fair to give to the future outcast. There was the potential for trouble if Craig came back with a weapon. A short-range weapon would let him defend himself, but wouldn't give him the opportunity to use it offensively against the neighborhood. They narrowed the choice down to a Ruger 9mm pistol or a Mossberg 20-gauge shotgun. There were pros and cons to both. Mark thought that they should get Gunny's advice, and Jim went to get their security expert. Mark looked at the rifles they had brought back from Waco. Some of them were cheap, but most of them were quality weapons. They would be put to good use. He picked up one of the ARs and looked it over. Seven more ARs would definitely come in handy, but hadn't there been nine? Mark looked around. Maybe he'd missed a couple. Nope, there were only seven. He had probably miscounted when they were loading them up. Jim came back in with Gunny, and Mark asked his friend if he remembered how many of the little black rifles there were. He had unloaded. Nine, Jim said. I only see seven. Did you take any somewhere else? We gave one to Rob, remember? Right, but what about the other one, Mark asked. They were all leaning against the workbench. I had intended to clean and inspect all the guns this afternoon, but I wasn't able to get to it yet. Where could it have gone? You boys beat all I ever saw, Gunny said. Mark and Jim turned and looked at the old man with the questioning eyes. It's obvious somebody stole it. What? Mark asked. Who? Jim was only half a second behind. You heard me. And if I know who, if I knew who, I'd already have him hung out to dry. You should both have your butts kicked up between your shoulders for not locking this stuff up. We've got a lot of people here now, and we don't really know all of them that well, do we? You can't trust anyone. I'd check to see if anything else is missing. Mark and Jim looked at the other guns, but they couldn't remember the exact number there had been, and nothing jumped out at them as missing. Jim had counted the mags and ammo last night, and none of the other, none of either were gone. When they looked at the liquor and drugs, though, it was clear that some of them had been taken. There were at least two bottles of bourbon and three bottles of painkillers missing. 
What do we do now? Jim asked. What can you do? Go door to door and search every home? I don't think so, Gunny asked. You just have to put the word out that the stuff is missing and that it belongs to everyone who lives here. Hopefully somebody will turn the thief in and will will and will do to him what we're doing to Craig. In fact, he may be the one who stole the stuff. If and you'll sneak around with another man's wife, I reckon you might be able you might be the type to steal too. You may be right. So did Jim talk to you about what we should give him for a weapon? Yes, but I think you're going about it all wrong. Just confront him and tell him that he's out. Don't humiliate him in front of everyone by asking them to vote if he gets the food and stuff. Ask him what he needs. Give it to him if it's within reason. No reason not to treat him like a man. Let him leave with a little dignity left. Might make it go smoother. You're right again, Gunny. Why don't the three of us go talk to him right now? Gunny nodded his head. Mark locked the shed behind them this time, and the men headed down to Susan's house. When they got there, Susan hadn't seen Craig since before the security meeting committee. Security committee meeting. Mark told her about the stolen items, and Susan said that she'd already packed all his stuff, and there was nothing in Craig's room. Mark told her what they planned, and she agreed it was best. She said that if it had been left up to her, she would most likely would have thrown him out with only the clothes on his back. She had no idea where he might be unless Joe wasn't home. The men figured that they would try the Bagwell house and headed that way. They spotted Craig coming down the main road. Hey, Craig, you got a minute? Sure, he answered. Mike thought his eyes looked a little glassy, but there was no smell of alcohol. I must be in big trouble if the three of you want to talk to me. I didn't forget a guard shift, did I? Nothing like that. Where are you coming from? Oh, I was just over at a friend's house. He was clearly being vague. Mark wondered who this friend's husband was. Listen, Craig, he began. I'm going to be straight with you. Everybody knows about you and Connie. Susan knows too, and she's not going to put you up, put you up anymore. So you have to leave. You want to make this easy for we want to make this as easy for you as possible, but you have burned your bridges here, and there's no other choice. The playboy stared blankly, blankly for a minute. What if someone else volunteers to let me stay with them? And who do you think that is going to be? Craig hung his head. Nobody. Tell us what you need, and we'll try to help you. Mark offered. Could you give me a ride to Victoria? I have a sister who lives down there. Mark thought for a moment. We can't take you that far. I don't know if it's safe to drive past Gonzales. How about we take you that far and you can walk the rest? It's only 50 or 60 miles from there. You can make it in four or five days easy. We'll give you a tent, sleeping bag, plus enough food and water. I'll need a rifle too if I'm going to walk that far. No rifles, Gunny said. We'll give you a shotgun. Take it or leave it. I'll take it. Can we wait until in the morning to leave? Mark looked at Gunny for guidance. All right, the old man agreed. But you stay at the clinic tonight, and with a guard, first light you hit the road. Craig nodded his head. Thanks for helping me, Mark. Mark inwardly smiled. It was strange. He was kicking Craig out of the subdivision and getting thanked by the man he was sending away. Maybe being political was the best way to get things done. Gunny, would you take Craig over to the clinic? I'll go and pick up his stuff from Susan's. Jim, can you run and get the items Craig needs out of the shed and take them to him? You can just... Leave the shotgun in the shed for now. Mark handed the key to Jim. Everyone headed off in different directions. Mark started back to Susan's when Joe came running up to him. Mark, can I talk with you? Sure, Joe. What's up? Mark prayed that it wasn't about what he thought it was about. Remember I told you about my wife and I having problems? Yes, Mark thought. Crap, it is about that, he thought. Well, I think I have a solution. Really? What is it? He asked and then thought. You don't know it, but I just fixed your problem. Connie and I have never been able to have kids of our own. I was thinking that we could adopt the Roberts boys. What do you think? Mark took a deep breath. Have you talked this over with Connie? No, I want to surprise her. I think she'd have to be in on it, and we need to discuss what's best for the boys. This isn't like bringing home a couple of puppies for a surprise, Joe. I know that. Can we all discuss it later? Would tomorrow be all right in the morning, Joe asked hopefully. I have some errands to run first thing tomorrow, but as soon as I get back, okay? Thanks, Mark. You're a pal. Joe smiled happily and then headed back to his house. Shit, Mark said to himself, not caring about the dollar. End of chapter 48.